This more or less brings us to the end of the series. I'd like to touch on what we've achieved and how we can verify we actually refactored everything correctly into our functional core imperative shell. Just to review, the functional core is always going to be immutable simple functions that don't have any side effects or mutation. In this case, our functional core is made up of three functions. Let's take a look at those ones now. We have redo, undo, and make move. And this is all of our functional core. You can see there's no references to things like uh, value or ref or reactive. This is all plain old JavaScript values. And there's also no mutation at all. Everything is very functional and we're not doing any mutating at all. We always just return new values based on the inputs and there's no using of global variables. For this reason, it is very testable and very reliable. Our functional core starts up here, functional core. And we have those three methods and it's about 30 lines long. It's really not that large. Down here where we use, use tic-tac-toe, this is our imperative shell. And this is also around 30 or 40 lines. And all we're doing here is basically wrapping our functional core. So you can see here we have this move function, which is wrapping our functional core. Based on the inputs, we get some new values here. Or based on these inputs rather, we get these new output values here. And then all we need to do is update our imperative shell by mutating those variables. And that will cause a re-render and everything will be updated. Just to really emphasize how we managed to separate everything, I was actually able to reuse this logic with no changes whatsoever in a React application. And I'm going to show you that now. What you can see here is the functional core from our view app. And if I minimize into my React application, everything is identical. I have changed nothing at all. This is our functional core. We have redo, we have undo, and we have make move. And that's all we have for our functional core. Let's head over to the React integration layer, the imperative shell, and see how we've integrated it there. Just to prove this is actually working, I'm going to show you the React app. Here it is. I'm able to refresh the page, make a bunch of moves, and undo and redo are all working correctly. So you can see here, I'm importing my functional core, undo, redo, and make move. And what we need to do here is wrap these in our imperative shell. In this case, it's going to be our React APIs. So you can see here, we set up our reactivity. We have three use state hooks for the current move, the current counter, and the current board. What gets really interesting is how we wrap this move function here. And this is very similar to what we did in view. We're calling make move over here and we're passing in the current board. In this case, it's going to be the board's value using the move count to reference the current board. We pass in the column, the row, the current counter and the move count, and that returns the new values, move count, counter and board. Then all we need to do is call set boards, set current counter and set move counter to update our mutable state, which is declared up here. Once we've done that, we have undo move and all undo move is doing is wrapping undo in, in this set move count. And that's exactly what we did in our view app as well. In view, we did something like move.value equals blah, blah, blah. This is not very reacty. React prefers to have functions to update things. So we have the set move count function, which is just set to the result of undo move. And we do exactly the same thing for redo move as well. We pass in the current count and the total boards count, and then we update using the new value. Finally, we have our render function down here. Let's take a quick look at it. It's very similar to view again. We have the current board, which we map over and we loop over each of the rows. We then map over each of the columns and we have the same click listener here, calling that move function, passing in the column and move we'd like to move into. Again, identical to our view layer. Finally, we have our buttons for undo and redo. And those are of course, just calling the undo and redo move, which is just a wrapper around our, our functional core, which we just had a look at earlier. And you can see everything is still working exactly the same with absolutely no changes to our functional core. What this means is we were able to isolate things correctly. Our business logic survived through a factor and it's even survived changing frameworks, which is exact, exactly how it should be. It's very likely over a long period of time, a business will change frameworks or even potentially languages, but the core problem you're solving is probably not going to change. And that's why there's a lot of benefit in isolating that core problem into very simple JavaScript functions or whatever language you're using. And that's going to allow you to easily test those and they're going to survive many, many refactors for many uh, years to come. Anyway, that's all the things I wanted to talk about regarding functional core and imperative shell. This is not a new idea at all. It's been around for a very long time. I will link some resources in the description so you can check those out to learn a little bit more about it. And I'll see you in the next series of lectures.